Hey everyone, Tara Melton here from Magnet Forensics. Today I'm going to walk you through how our connections feature in Axiom can assist you in your examinations. Whether you're dealing with data exfiltration, potentially malicious files, harassment, really any type of examination can utilize connections to help you find relevant correlations in the artifacts in your case. I have a couple of cases open in Axiom Examine, so you can see multiple examples of how connections can be used. In this first case, you see that I only have one hard drive processed, and connections was already built. Building connections happens after your case is processed, and to do that, you just go up into the Tools menu and select the Build Connections option here. Or, if you want it done automatically once your case is processed, you can configure that in your settings as you see here. Keep in mind that you can still look through and do analysis in your case while Connections is being built. I'm going to switch over to the Artifacts view, and I've identified an item of interest, maybe a sensitive document that I want a little bit more information about, like maybe who has accessed it, where else it might be found within the evidence, how it's moved around. I can use Connections to make that analysis much faster and easier. Connections works by using some of these artifact attributes that you see here on the right, and it makes relevant associations between these attributes within all the artifacts in your case. Any of these attributes that have this icon next to it, we can build connections from. So in this example, the file name, the author, uh, the hash value as well, etc. So let's see what that looks like. I'll click on the icon to build connections from this file name. And just with this one hard drive loaded in, we can still get some really valuable output. As I start cleaning up the view a little bit, we can see some file paths where this file was located, a couple of different applications that were used to access it. And then up here, we can see that this file of interest was sent between these email addresses. It was transferred by this Gene email address into this Allison one. So even if you have just one evidence source, connections can still draw some really useful correlations. Now let's switch over to this other case, and you can see there's a lot more going on here with a bunch of different evidence sources. We have a hard drive, memory, there's a USB device, um, and some cloud accounts as well. I'm going to switch over to artifacts, and I've identified another document of interest that I might want to build connections from. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the icon next to the file name. And now you can see there's a lot more going on here because we have all those evidence items loaded in. But note that you can always apply filters up here at the top if you want to narrow down what you're looking at. As I'm going through, you can see how easy it is to show where this document has been. Uh, we can see that it was on this user's uh, cloud account in, in the OneDrive account and also on this uh, external USB device as well. So if you have a case where your user is exfilling data to alternate evidence sources, it's pretty easy to hone in on that here. From these nodes, we can continue to make connections. So for example, here it shows this document in question was in this user's SharePoint based on this URL. If we wanted to see what else was found in this location, I can double click on this node and build connections off of it. Now we can see all the other files that were found here. And if there's another file of interest that we wanted to know more about, again, we can continue to build connections from that as well. Once I start cleaning up this view a little bit, again, we see some valuable information where the different locations where this file can be found, and even that it was emailed between these two users down here at the bottom. So those are some data exfil and data transfer examples. I'm going to switch gears a little bit to show a different type of investigation. I'm going to switch back to artifacts view, and maybe we're looking at a potentially infected dev device. I'm going to look at these operating system artifacts, specifically at the auto runs artifact, uh, to see if there's any weird persistence items that stand out that could potentially be malicious. This one here looks suspicious, so I'm going to go ahead and build connections off of it. Now notice at the right here, there's a listing of the artifacts that were connected. We see an artifact from memory, from the file scan plugin, from volatility, and there's also use for useful correlations that uh, come from the artifacts from dollar sign log file and the USN journal. There's super useful information that can come from these sources, but sometimes it's time consuming to go through. So here we can draw those relevant connections very quickly. So just for example, looking at this rename entry uh, from the dollar sign log file, we have a previous file name here that we might want to look into further or use as one of our indicators. Again, we can expand these nodes out further. I'm just going to double click on this file identifier uh, node here, and we do see some additional indicators that we might want to look into here at the bottom. Expanding this one out even further, I even have a URL now and evidence that this file may have been downloaded from there, which could potentially be my infection vector. 
These are just a couple of different use cases, but really tons of useful data can be drawn through connections, regardless of the type of case that you're working. We hope this saves you some time in your analysis, and we encourage you to go ahead and check it out. Let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching, everyone.